Hey everyone, rather than Coherent here, welcome back to Subnautica. So, I've done all of my managers up between episodes, and in doing so, we've filled the decoy tube now. But more importantly, while I charged all five of their power cells, this one stayed at 100%, and I never turned my engines off. I'm gonna go confirm that's true real quick, just to make sure. Yeah, engine's still on. So engines don't actually passively drain power, which is a thing I thought was true during my entire first playthrough. Now, I haven't really done anything other than management and just, like, chores off-screen. There's now a locker for decoy tubes as well. There's only two in there, but you make them in batches of three. So, with our Cyclops back up to full power, I realize there's a fabricator here, and we can do some stuff. We could upgrade the decoy tube, but that sounds terrible. Like, I'd just rather have two lithium than an upgraded decoy tube. Uh, we got the Cyclops shield upgrade module, and all we need to make that is a power cell and Pollyanna leaf. And I'm like 100% sure that we can go make Pollyanna Loon because we just got that Deep Shroom. And I'm pretty sure that you need Deep Shrooms to make Pollyanna Loon. I planted all my stuff in my garden, and that includes planting my Deep Shrooms, stabbing it, using the seeds to plant more. So we're just going to do that process again. Hello, Tiger Plant. It's good to see you, too. Don't mind me. I'll just be tending my garden like I always do. You'd think it would be used to this by now. So, with that obtained, I've been messing up this dolphin dive every time, and I just can't get it to work. Anyway, I think we can make this into Pollyanna Lane, right? That's how this goes? Uh, we make this into Hydrochloric Acid with salt, and then into Pollyanna Lane. It turns out we did need a very small amount of salt, and if I hadn't made the water purifier, I would have needed to go collect some small amount of salt. So it did something. Congratulations, you were important. So with that done, we should be able to go make the shield charger. And indeed we can. It'll use our advanced wiring kit. But it's fine, because this is one of the best upgrades in the game. Because now we're functionally invincible as opposed to mostly invincible. So heading back up to the dash of the Cyclops. First of all, the actual creature decoy tube is fireable now, but we have this button as well. I'm not going to press it because it uses a ridiculous amount of power, but what it does is it creates a temporary force field around the Cyclops that will deflect any creature attack, including Leviathans. So while it's not very good to keep it up the whole time, it is great to use right before the Cyclops gets attacked and just deflect the attack at the very last moment. Okay, so I think without further ado, it's time to get on to the main topic of the day. Where are we exploring? What's the game plan? And actually, what beacons have we not touched yet? We haven't done Life Pod 2 or Life Pod 13. We've done everything else. And in terms of interesting biomes, we have Blood Kelp, Grand Reef, Floating Islands. Just because we're so close to Grand Reef and so much of the game is behind Grand Reef, I'm going to go do that today. That makes the most sense in my head. I kind of want to go do the Life Pods since we haven't done them yet. But they're very far north, and I think one of them at least is in Reaper territory, the other one is uh, Bone Shark Central, basically. So I know we need to go west to get to the Grand Reef, but I'm not quite sure where the best place to start exploring is, so I'm going to get off the Cyclops because I can't use my PDA while piloting it. So I think we're just going to come in like, we're just going to a straight line and come in at the top here, and we'll figure it out as we go. Today should be a lot more dangerous than the past couple of days, for sure. God, that's terrifying. That was a spade fish. Why was it so loud? So, as I was previously saying, today should be a lot more dangerous than the past couple of days. Not because of crashing into small fish, but because of crab squids, warpers, and ghost leviathans. Oh my. The Grand Reef is the beginning of the endgame, and it absolutely feels like it. It also helps that instead of, like, the surface being totally safe, there's bone sharks everywhere. I think I've missed my target and I'm in Cragfield. Yeah, I need to cut right a pretty substantial amount. Hey, the rabbit ray hatched. Good job. That was absolutely not worth the hassle, but I would technically not be 100% complete without doing it, so here we are. I think... Seeing Grand Reef for the first time might have been more impactful on me than Jelly Shroom. Just like descending into the dark trying to figure out what the hell's happening, where I am.
I'm going to start using my cameras right now because I can't really accurately make out what's beneath me. We're going to keep going down for the bed. Thankfully, unlike the sea moth, the warper can't rip me out of the cyclops. Or I don't think he can. He never has before. So I'm going to get out and explore for a bit, just completely by hand with the sea glide. Because I don't think there's anything here, but it would be a shame not to check and end up missing something. What is this plant? This is definitely a thing I need. This thing is absolutely crazy. You know, just a membrane tree. That's going in my garden for sure. Also, I didn't think to try to stab the uh, anchor pod when I scanned them last episode. Of course you can't. That would just be too cool to grow. Hmm, there is some slight merit to going to uh, Blood Kelp before this to make the reinforced diving suit. But that sounds like bitching out to me. So I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, which is getting time capsules. Uh, yes, totally. I get what you're saying. So first of all, oh my god, he gave me this cuttlefish egg. What a friend. His name is Orlando, and I love him very much. Please take care of him. I absolutely will, sir. I wouldn't give somebody my cuttlefish egg. That man is a saint. So, let's see if this is another cuttlefish egg. Probably not. I'll miss this planet finally made it. I don't want to rip on this guy too much for misspelling finally, but come on. Anyway, finally made it. Hope you'll make it too. This is my friend Demir, who motivated me for my whole journey, and I don't want to take him from his home. Take good care of him. Wish you the best of luck. I'm not convinced. That was water. Is my game glitched? Um, that doesn't appear to be the contents that he was... Was your friend a bottle of water? Did you lose your mind? I'm very confused. I am not confused about this. This is the item that I want. This is one of the remaining things I need for my prawn suit to be useful. I believe this is the second drill arm. Now the prawn suit has actually got a purpose and can get resources faster than anything else. I actually have two mods installed specifically for the prawn suit. One of them makes you mine four times faster, because that is, like, beyond tedious busy work in the base game. And the other one makes you able to switch prawn suit arms on the fly. And this is just great for me. I did not realize that was at this wreck. My memory of the late game is pretty much a blur. I've got a much more solid memory of the early game. I'm not going to explore this wreck at 42 health, 100 meters from my si from the Seamoth or the Cyclops. That sounds like How to Kill Yourself 101. Nine. Absolutely putting both of those in a new locker named Take Home. So then, let's see what's inside of this. I've already got the drill arm, the death module. I don't think anything even needs to be inside for me. I feel like I got more than I could possibly have wanted from it. This is one of the most useful wrecks we've had in quite a while. PDA, which is required for 100%, I guess. Integrating new PDA data. I suppose at the end of this, I'm just gonna like scroll through my entire data file as I talk about my opinions on Subnautica. And then somebody's gonna be like, by the way, you did it 100% at you scrub. Like, that's how this ends, right? <laughs> oh, this is. I love it when the game decides, by the way, you should die now. Oof, that is a nightmare. Already got this. It's a repulsion cannon more drill arms. I'm going to scan this just in case I'm remembering wrong and we didn't finish the drill arm. I'm pretty sure it's only two. In fact, it is. Right. Uh, that's the trick door that's in so many wrecks that you can't actually open, but this one is very openable. Alright, so. Right, what's behind door number two? Is it just drowning? Once I have like 40 seconds left, I need to leave. But... 80 seconds should be more than enough to explore this entire ship. Uh 
Oh, I've already got this. What am I even doing? Okay, so this is an exit. Which is helpful. It means I'm a lot less likely to drown. My original plan probably resulted in me drowning now that I actually think about it. Since it would mean that I have to swim back through the entire uh, system. Oh, great. That's what my current plan is anyway. Alright, so it's just exits in both directions. I feel like I've gotten everything here. I probably missed something. I'm probably terrible at the game. But I'm going to call it here. Because I don't think I have. Let's make sure there's nothing up here up uh, where the wreck fell down from. Alright, so that was a really, really good wreck. The Reef Zone's being kind of impressive right now, but this isn't the part of the Reef Zone that blows my mind. We'll talk about that once I'm safely inside, looking at my map, and I kind of know where I am. Because right now, we're in the Grand Reef, but we're in the lower half of it. The Grand Reef actually has, like, distinct vertical sections. Yeah, we're still very much on the edge of the biome. I'm pretty sure the Grand Reef borders the void, so we're probably going to go all the way to the edge of the map today. But for right now, we're just going to the bottom. Not a whole lot to think about. Should definitely be using cameras, though. Is a hole that I can go through? No, it's just dark. And now we're getting to the very surreal, strange parts of the Grand Reef where we're actually seeing the biome in it full. But uh, there's still a lot more to this than we've seen. Actually, I'm, I'm going to try not to crash into that. Uh, I'm going to explore this using my sea moth. I'm way more comfortable in my sea moth in the Grand Reef than I am in the Cyclops. I should probably fix it up first, though. Welcome aboard, Captain. All systems online. All right, so let's try this whole sea moth thing again. Map says do whatever you want, and what I want to do is go down. God, the sea moth is just so nice to use. I prefer it to the Cyclops and the Prawn Suit by Miles. Because the Cyclops is, uh... Like, protective and alienating. You lose... You sort of lose contact with the area that you're in. You certainly lose all fear. I'm never really afraid inside of the Cyclops. Which, to be fair, has gotten to the point of the vehicle, but I feel like it's not improving the game, really. And like this, I think it's more obvious how I think this area is beautiful and interesting. I'm actually going to go west and hit the other side. I've sort of went all the way through it right now. Oh, hello, sir. Could you not? So this is the crab squid. He EMPs you. He's kind of an ass. Nah, that's good, dude. We don't need to do this. Now, I do need to scan a crab squid, but it would probably be easier to scan the crab squid's baby that's going to live in my aquarium than the full-grown one. Not quite sure how I got snuck up on by him. I think it's called being bad at the game. Hmm. So, I think I know what's going on here. I think that the biomap only works if you're exploring the lowest level. Like, if you swim across the surface, it wouldn't explore anything. So I think that I need to go to the Deep Grand Reef. Is 500 meters not the Deep Grand Reef? I'm not exploring past this point, and I'm kind of confused. Alright, so there's the infected crab swim the Gossy base. That's a thing that I need to worry about. And by worry about it, I mean I need to actually go explore that. Look, just leave the Seamoth alone. He's a good guy. 
Look, you son of a bitch, stop that. What did he do to you? Leave him alone. Alright, so that's him utterly not a problem. I guess I could have scanned him, but not a huge priority. I mean, it's gotta be a crab squid egg. What else would it be? It doesn't, it doesn't look much like a crab squid to me, but it's gotta be, right? Integrating new PDA data. Alright, so we're getting useful things here. I need to grab a carry-all bag just so that it's in my base. I need a coffee vending machine because, my god, this is mandatory to finish the game. There is no idol more important to me right now than that one. Uh, can you go up from here or do you have to go outside? Looks like you have to go outside. I believe that's 100% in this floor. So let's scan this guy real quick. Takes a little bit, he's sort of massive. Alright, good job. I'm not going to be touching him again. Integrating new PDA data. So, this is where I got the alien containment forever ago. And this is like the easiest thing to miss in the whole game, is this little room. But I mean, like, you can see from the outside there's something here, so I guess that's not as obnoxious as it could be. Integrating new PDA data. Now, I see the Cuttlefish egg. I'm not picking him up. I'm going to get all five Cuttlefish eggs in one video later on. Acquired. I will, however, pick up all of this garbage. I need that garbage for my base. All of the empty shelves in my base make me feel pretty bad about myself. So I think that's everything I need. Alright, let's go. I'm not quite sure if that was... There's another crab squid right there that is everywhere. Yep, that's just an anchor pod. It's nothing interesting. We'll just pretend that I was trying to lose the crab squid and not looking for things that didn't exist. Okay, so I'm going to go really far down and then southwest and see if it starts uncovering the fog of war. Well, I don't think I'm going far down right now. I think I'm entering Lost River. I'm 100% entering Lost River. Could you not, sir? So, um, yes, 1,000% this is Lost River. But it's kind of where I thought I was, so... I don't think you can really go deeper down than this in Grand Reef. Man, they are angry. Sound a little bit horrifying, too. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe I need... Well, now I'm just confused. I'm decidedly not in this area. Hmm. So I'm beneath the seafloor. I'm already in deep granary. Yes. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe I need to be above this. Let's try for that. We're just going to abandon my Cyclops, he'll be fine. We're going to fix this up before it dies a horrible death. So, my map says that if I go a little bit west, I'll immediately be in Fog of War territory. 
And if it gets fixed up here, then I know that it's based on me being at this level of the seafloor, not the level beneath me, that it unfogs. Alright, yes, that's exactly what's happening. The Deep Grand Reef isn't the biome that I'm exploring. The Deep Grand Reef is considered the subterranean biome. That makes sense, because we have subterranean maps, actually. I should have realized it was the other way around immediately. They've got yet another alien vent. They're just all over the place, and we'll find out how they work and what they do much later. I feel like I'm just going to trip over myself into a ghost leviathan. Because I don't remember where they are. In fact, I think I've only ever seen one of the two that even is in this bot. Oh, yeah, there they are. There we go. <laughs> uh, that's kind of case in point. Well, let's head north a bit and hit Sea Charter's Pass so we can start skirting the edges of this. And it says Sea Charter's Pass, but I'm pretty sure that it's basically just Grand Reef Sparse Reef Hybrid and the Sea Charters happen to be there. It's not really its own biome. It's more like a thing inside of another biome. We'll go hang out with the Ghost Leviathans in a bit. You don't need to worry about that if that's something you're like, Ah, oh, shit, he's going to avoid them. It's like, no. I'm pretty sure I can't. But this, I think, is actually the Sea Charters Path, right? That's why the ground is so smooth. Well, let's follow the path a bit. Let's see if we can't find them. Because I need to scan them and the shale they'll be kicking up. I can't hear them in the distance. Well, we'll come check for Sea Treaders some other time. They seem to be migrating elsewhere right now. We need to head north a little bit to get to the edge of Grand Reef. Kind of feel like I'm already there, friends. Am I at the void? Are we sure I'm not at the void? <laughs> Going to save my game real quick. I feel like I'm at the void and the bio map is lying to me. I'm 100% sure this is the void right now. Warning, entry yep. ecological death zone. Adding report to data bank. I'm good. I'll go back, sir. It's all right. I, you don't need to tell me. I know it was the void. So, um, biomap. I have some questions for you. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, it just sort of stops. Okay. So, I'm probably going to be back with you guys in a bit. I'm just going to like, go around the whole edge, and I don't think I'm going to encounter anybody. I'm pretty sure there's nothing on the edge of the map anyway. It'd be weird if the Ghost Leviathans patrolled all the way out to the middle of nothing. Especially since nothing is defined by being filled with Ghost Leviathans. On the other hand, it would make quite a lot of sense if they patrolled to the Void, since that's where the big Ghost Leviathans live. I say the big ghost leviathans, like any of them are really small. There are explicitly juvenile ghost leviathans in the game, and they are still massive. I might have just killed him. No, he's fine. Alright, I need to scan this enzyme beeper because I haven't done this yet. Alright, so I've been patrolling this for a while. Let's actually listen to some of these logs that we found. Aboard, Let's do it somewhere else. 
I've changed my mind. <laughs> there are warpers everywhere. On the one hand, I want to stop and fix my ship, but on the other hand, warper is everywhere and I don't know where the ghost leviathan is. I'm just going to keep going. It's probably going to be safer to not stop. Oh, hey, we found the sea treaders. Excellent. Hey, guys. So first, I want to scan these majestic bastards. Look at them. Look at these giant... Oh, uh, I think he's mad. Come on, guys. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just scanning you. It's not that big of a deal. Look, dude. I don't have time for this right now. Can you just not? Oh, he's about to get out. Did he just leave? That's a rude. They should be kicking up shale, I think. Yes. Oh. You can't scan this. Alright then. So, let's read some logs. Dude, are you serious with this? What? I don't quite know how he hit me. So then, what are the rules that you follow? I don't understand. You're frozen in time. How are you hitting me? So we're going to try to read the logs somewhere else that isn't surrounded by warpers. But the sea treaders are really cool. They're just like this small group of migratory animals. They walk around kicking up shale and pooping. You can throw their poop into fire reactors. But uh, I'll eventually read logs for you guys. Now might be a particularly bad time though, based on uh, you know, being at the edge of the void surrounded by warpers. Not quite the best time to do this. So you can scan shale chunks, just not the ones that are kicked up? What are the rules? Come on. Make up your mind, game. This looks like I finally finished. Yes, alright, now we're in Crag Zone. So we're starting to get to the edge of the reef. Which is what I've been wanting the whole time. Through literally the most roundabout possible method, we are going to get back to the Cyclops. Oh, hey, it's an infected bone shark. S slightly more horrific than a normal bone shark. I don't know if I'm going to die to the bone sharks or to driving into rocks first, but I'd prefer not to die to either if at all possible. Yeah, the boundary between these biomes is absolutely desolate. Which sort of makes sense, considering the crag zone is basically absolutely desolate. I think the crag zone might actually be my least favorite biome. Even though I... Does it not have any Reaper Leviathans? I don't think it has any Reaper Leviathans. It certainly has less than Dunes, Mountains, or Crash Zone, that's for sure. So the problem I have with biome map, where the biomes aren't really like super accurately marked, isn't like a problem with the way the mod is made. It's just a fundamental problem with drawing a biome map. 
is uh the biomes blur together at the edges right so a it's gonna be ridiculously hard to actually get it perfectly accurate but b this biome isn't really crag zone or grand reef it's the boundary between them Like, it's really apparent here, I just have to open my map to tell where I need to explore, because left and right are the same thing, but it varies which way is the actual boundary. Is that a sea cactus? What am I looking at? There's no way that's a thing I can plant. I think I've got to get out and check, though. Nah, I'm very sure I can't use it. I'm not going to bite the sand shark over this. Not the sand shark, the fallen shark. I'm going into crags by accident. I also might hate the crag zone unnecessarily because I spent a lot of time fairly early there in my first game. Alright, so now we just beeline the Cyclops and... That should give us a chance to finally read all of these logs that I've been wanting to read for like the past 20 minutes. How did I manage to get it where it is without crashing into either wall? It's fairly impressive. So having gone through all of my blueprints, the only new things that matter are the coffee vending machine. I'll need a couple dozen of those. And also, scrolling up here, I can make the Cyclops death module no problem once I head back to base. So while there is lore for anchor pods and membrane trees, it's not super interesting to be honest. The Sea Treader apparently counts as a Leviathan. So, uh, the main thing it tells you about the Sea Treader Leviathan is that its only real threat is the Ghost Leviathan, and it uses these antennas to make sure they're nowhere near the Ghost Leviathan. Um, I am now on the roof of my, uh, Cyclops. I love that glitch. Hmm. So I guess I'm just dead, and I'll see you guys back here later. Well, shit. Let's see if I can't get down over here without dying. Alright, so I successfully lived. I'm not sure if that helps me. I'm in the water now. Neat. Awesome. Fantastic. What a great game. It has no major glitches at all. Why we have a medkit fabricator, I guess. The main thing that it tells you about the crab squid that I think is actually really cool is that they assume, is they believe the crab squid can actually use tools, which is terrifying. And when you scan the warper, it mostly just tells you, we have no idea what this is, we're not even convinced it's a real fish, this might be a robot. Which it totally is. So. I've explored the edge of the Grand Reef, and you can see that it's a massive... It is, uh, like, similar in size to everything we explored in the previous episode, right? Like, Sparse Reef to here is basically the same amount of biome as the Grand Reef. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to explore this more or less off-camera, and I'm just going to cut to things when I find them for you guys. Oh. As he found me. I think he might have. I'm not really sure. I need to get out and actually stasis rifle him. Hmm, that's a little bit glitchy when I take it out. Everything's fine. I'm gonna fix this first, so that when he <laughs> finally gets free, he won't instantly kill it. All right, let's scan this big guy. Nothing bad is happening. This is completely safe. All right, let's flee. Let's stop being here. Oh, I've done a I've done a bad thing. Well, it's all right. He'll only hit me once. He won't break my Seamoth, and then we'll escape. Also, I'm holding up forward and diagonal, so I think we're good. 
The problem is that I think I'm just going to keep clipping into this, but I can still just use attack to get away from it. We're fine. We're totally fine. Stasis rifle is a little bit silly. The main reason I chose to fight him at all there is because the alternative was hoping he wouldn't see me and my sea wall was low enough that he caught me by surprise, he'd kill it in one hit. So we're going to push southeast here, and if I ever feel safe, I'll redo that Ghost Leviathan log. So I'm just collecting a little bit of, uh, you know, alien poop. Since I used all of those oculus for no reason, I figured I should pick up more fire reactor fuel for my mobile base. Are they all stuck together in a big, stupid pile? I don't think they can move. I think they're tangled. What a majestic creature. Ghost Leviathan. This creature is approaching the size limit for sustainable organic life forms. What a terrible way to start off this description. Oh, before we get into this, I should read that other thing we got. We need to read the uh, advanced theories, right? Yeah, Crater Edge. Geological scans of this area show a steep decline in all directions. This data is consistent with the theory that the Aurora crashed on the edge of a two kilometer square volcanic crater. It has likely been millennia since an eruption reached the surface, encouraging the ecosystem within the crater to flourish. The ecology of the trench surrounding the crater supports only two kinds of life. Microscopic and Leviathan class. Exploration is ill-advised. This is probably the best in-game explanation of a map edge that I've ever seen. Uh, it's why you can't leave. You're surrounded by ghost leviathans and nothing. So this is important to know. These guys eat microscopic life forms. They're not predatory. They're just dicks. They're just territorial and don't like you. Assessment, extreme threat, avoid the crater edge. And also, they're probably migratory, so who knows where else they could be. Another thing we've just done is we've scanned the enzyme host peeper. And it's a beeper observed emitting a faint fluorescent enzyme trail and engaged in unusual behavior patterns. And uh, the 2LDR of this, you can read it yourself, you can just pause the screen here, is that it's carrying some sort of enzyme that appears to be fighting symptoms of the infection, and it's also got weird behavior where it's intentionally spreading that enzyme around. So I'm going to go back to exploring the area, and I'm going to start playing some logs while I do. This is the Aurora Scanner Room voice log. The way I see it, no one's to blame here. He gave me the wrong coordinates. She didn't give me clear instruction. Okay, I'll rephrase. You've been equally incompetent. Now, we've lost time, but we're closer to the planet. So if the Degasi's out there, the scan should pick it up. Why are we even helping the Mongolians? They're the competition. Enjoy your shore leave on Sanjay Station? Like having fuel in the tanks? Thank the Mongolians. We run the scans, we show them we didn't find anything, and we say thanks for the free dinner. Clear? Sir, there's something odd on the surface scan here. Turn that recorder off. <laughs> I enjoy that conversation. Do I want more crab squid eggs? Um, no, I don't. That's just another example of me really liking the world building in the game, though. That's just a thing that didn't need to exist, and I'm glad that it does. But we have the final Degasi locks now. Or the penultimate Degasi lock, since we already had the last one. Um... Because the actual last one is Bart Torgol number three, Return from the Deep. These are the Degasi logs that we just got in the 500 meter sea base in the Grand Reef. So, we play 739 first, and then number three at the end. Please stop fighting and listen. We're sick. What? How? You've been coughing, right? Feeling itchy? Blisters? Yeah. The biometrics would have warned us if we were sick. It's something new. It's not in the database. Come on, man. What's it gonna do? Turn us inside out. Dissolve us into jelly. It's an alien bacteria. It's everywhere. Every organism on this planet. It's altering our genetic code. How are the creatures surviving if they're infected? I don't know yet. Want me to cut some of them open for you? Find out what makes them tick? No. Just tell me what you need, son. Materials. Equipment. Just... Can I have some quiet? I need some time to think. Can we not do this right now, sir? Oh, apparently we can. Great. Welcome aboard, Captain. So this log is just them realizing they're sick, which we did forever ago, basically at game start. 
There's not a whole lot to say about it other than just their storyline. Margaret, Maida has boarded the habitat. What are you so happy about, Maida? Say, kid, I brought you something. Is that a Leviathan outside? Towed it home on the back of the sub. You killed that thing? It's still breathing. I was about to finish the job, but I can stay in chat if you'd like. No? Then make yourself useful and pass me that hardened blade. Are you out of your mind? You brought that thing here? What if it's not as dead as it looks? What if others come? You prefer it got curious and came of its own accord, or got messed up and dragged here? When we get off this planet, I am going to drag you through every court in the damn Federation. So that's another, that is the most extreme example of Maida just being the player character. It's like, I wonder if I can kill the Reaper Leviathan. And eventually, like after several minutes of stabbing later, like, oh yeah, totally, I can. Why are you mad at me for killing the Reaper Leviathan? How could this ever be a bad play? Alright, so I'm gonna play the last log and hopefully not die horribly trying to do it. I have had it with you, risking our lives. Oh, stow it, Chief. The kid can't kill this disease without fish to study. I'm just bringing him home. But Tell her. Tell her I'm right. You're both wrong. Marguerite, I can't find out how they resist the bacteria if you slaughter them all. It ain't always they oblige in coming in alive. He means you're being reckless. Father, the outcome's no better if we hole up in here and don't go outside. But we have to find a middle way. There is no compromise. Not while she's on my sea base. Your sea base? I'm going outside. Bart, Torical has disembarked the habitat. Bart, come in. It's dangerous. Damn it, boy. I knew you can hear me. Chief. Chief, get off the radio and put on your helmet. What? Brace! Integrating new PDA so, data. at first I thought that Leviathan noise was in my game and got terrified. It's fine, it's just the PDA message. So now we basically know how they came to an end. Two of the three died to a Leviathan attack, and the last one succumbs to his illness. However, there is one data bank left. Others would came out of nowhere. An alien kraken, bigger than a cyclops, tore a hole clear through the reinforced hull. I barely got my breather in time. I told her. I said others would come. A rupture threw me clear of the habitat. And the monster turned and bore down on me. And just as its tentacles came within reach, made it appear out of nowhere. She had a sea glide in one hand, a jagged piece of scrap metal in the other. She meant to butcher that beast or die trying. The last I saw her, she had the metal lodged in its neck as the monster did its best to shake her, contorting off into the darkness. Certain she got her wish, one way or another. Then. I thought I saw a light deep below me. I hope maybe Bart had swum clear. I followed it. Now I wonder whether I saw anything at all. Our oxygen is low. The habitat is gone. I can't see the sky. Something surely has the scent of my blood. <laughs> And that's the end of the Legacy Sea Base. It's just... Oh, come on! I'm trying to talk about lore over here. Can you stop screaming? Pretty sure he's mad at me. No? Alright, good. Where was I? Oh, it's just a sad story. It's just they're all dead because this planet is awful. It's full of... It's just filled with apex predators. And if those don't get you, surely the space aids will. Yeah, yeah, you're very terrifying, but I need to clear the fog of war next to you, so, uh... Let's dance.
All right then. That works for me. Oh, it's time to go again. I don't know how much battery is left on my stasis rifle, so I'm gonna try to dodge him if he comes at me this time. All right, we're good. Let's see if anything's on top of this massive rock thing. I think the answer is decidedly no. Decidedly no. We're almost done exploring the Grand Reef, though. It's been beautiful, but I would like to leave. I've been here for like 30 minutes clearing out fog. Map says we're done. Let's go home. Oh, hello, sir. No? All right, good. So now the question becomes whether or not I actually want to keep going deeper into the Lost River or if I want to go do a Blood Kelp song. Because Blood Kelp will get me some things that I care about. Uh, namely, the reinforced diving suit. I think I'm going to go into Lost River. I'll just come out through a Blood Kelp zone. That sounds like a plan. Captain. Systems online. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to handle some chores between episode. Nothing big. Uh, but tomorrow, we're going to start back up here, and we're going to head deeper into the Lost River and actually start the end game. So, this has been Rather Go Here. I hope you've had a good time. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you around.